welcome back everyone. We're back for another episode of the Athlete's Mind. Um, today we're joined by Jude Grant, um, professional boxer, so thank you for coming on mate. Um, I'm Tony, your host. Uh, we've been doing a lot of footy ones and I want to switch it up, try and get different sports on, so um, we get straight into it. a chance to fall man it's funny how this happened though thought i'd be a lawyer first question we always ask our athletes is how did you actually get into boxing how'd you get into your sport what's the journey looked like from when you started to now um i feel like fighting's like always been something that i've done like to a like i guess unofficially and whatnot um i've always like wrestled with my mates and whatnot like you know as boys do mm. but i guess like after school you know i played like basketball played footy yep. and then I guess I was looking for the next thing that would keep me fit. Mm. And um, I always like looked up to boxers as well. But um, yeah, like, it was yeah. Like, definitely something that like, I wanted to jump into. Yeah, you've always been interested in that. Yeah, 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 for sure. And you started when you were 18, boxing, yeah. is that right? Yeah, so that's like a bit later than some other people. Was that hard, like sort of getting into it at a later age? Or did you sort of pick it up pretty quickly? Um, I picked it up decently quickly but that was also because I trained a lot mm. so like I just made up for I guess missed time with like extra sessions yeah, yeah so like yeah like it was something that I was conscious of when starting but mm. it didn't really make that much of a difference yeah that's good and I think you'd mentioned before as well that you played basketball or footy I think even tennis in there yeah, on yeah. that list um did any of those sports help with um transferring to boxing and fighting yeah absolutely so like I've done some Muay Thai fights and like I'm a left footer in footy mm, and like okay. my left kick is my main yeah, kick yeah. in Muay Thai um, yeah like I feel like the footwork from basketball trans- translated over as well yeah okay like right. I feel like yeah any sure. like um, mental stuff that like because you know footy's like mm. a team sport and then in boxing and fighting it's just you sort of thing a little bit like I feel like you know there's always adversities and like there's always like ways of dealing with it like across the board yeah but um just being by yourself i guess it's closer to like tennis yeah it's just you versus them Mm. and how much would you say like boxing has influenced your life as a whole like because i know for me like i did boxing for around a year Mm. and out of all the sports i've done boxing like changed my life like the most i'd say would you say that same with you oh yeah like i don't even like know where i'd be without Mm. boxing like it's just yeah insane yeah because i mean like I went to a few gyms, but with me, like, I was, like, I wouldn't really say insecure, but I was, like, more shy when I was up before, like, fighting and boxing and all that. (laughs) And after, like, my confidence went up. And I think, like, anyone who wants to try boxing, definitely give it a go. Because, like, you you even said yourself, like, you you don't know where you'd be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And when you started, you had your fight seven months into training. Is Mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah. Um, Did you have, like, nerves going into your fight, and how did you sort of overcome that? Um... I guess I really just got on with it. Like, I, I understood that there was going to be nerves. But, mm. um, like, for my first fight, I had the weigh-in. So, like, I had to cut weight for the weigh-in. So, like, yeah. I didn't eat the night before. Mm. And then the day of the fight, I was just, like, so nervous that I didn't eat again. Yeah, gee. So, like, that... And, like, that was a state title tournament. So, like, I had to fight the next day as well. And yeah. then the day after... Like, the, the week after for the final. Um which was difficult but like I guess it's just mm. like something that you like I knew like it was something I knew I had to do so I was yeah. gonna like deal with whatever came at me would you say like diet is like one of the hardest parts of boxing like eating yeah. and trying to cut yeah, weight absolutely. yeah absolutely um, now going more onto the mental side of boxing because in my opinion it's the most mental demanding sport out there as well as physical mm. um, do you ever get like mentally drained from training where it's just too much for you sort of stuff like stressed out yeah I feel like because I haven't been doing it as long it's still something that's like fresh to me mm. like that's why I'm sort of glad that I started later um, but I guess like yeah like 
even like recently like I couldn't find a fight mm. so like training and not having like an end goal was something that was really hard and something that I had to like overcome I guess yeah, yeah. and when training training does get a lot do you do anything like on the side to maybe take your mind off of any hobbies bit of party maybe yeah, yeah. What, for sure I like I make sure I, I enjoy yeah. my life um, like I spend time with mates mm. like we, we've got like an indoor team like stuff like that yeah um, indoor soccer team so like little things like just spending time with friends yeah. like family is like good to have like a lot of it's, it's good to focus on it but when you're not like focus on it yeah other things as well it's good to have like that balance between, yeah absolutely like, yeah, it absolutely. can't just be boxing 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 yeah you'll burn out yeah um, and who has been the biggest help for you when it's come to boxing like who's been that person who's kept you in check and in the right headspace um, the owner of my gym and my coach Pamon like yeah, yeah he's obviously like beyond just a coach or mm. like he's also my manager as well now but he's just beyond that like he's like a mentor for me as well yeah. and that's something that I didn't really expect going into it mm. I think it's very important to have a good coaches to student relationship like yeah. just once they understand how you fight it's you need that you need a good coach absolutely um, and as well as a fighter you also a coach yourself at yeah. the champions yeah. gym um, what made you want to take on a coach, coach's role um, the tactical side of boxing is always like something I've been very like passionate about yeah so it was I guess like a natural progression and it's like mm. something where I can focus and like dedicate all my time in the gym and like work in my craft and like mm. I guess like pay like I guess creating a path for others as well to yeah. have it their own them. success yeah. mm. and I think also coaching would um, help like you understand the moves as well because you're seeing others do it mm. and um, yeah I think that would be pretty good for yourself um, and for, for students that you are coaching, how much times a week do you think is like suitable for those looking to fight in the future? So how many, like training? Yeah, a week. Like how many times a week do you reckon? I train, so outside of like a fight camp. So if I've got like mm. a fight coming up in the next like two or so months, I'll yeah. train um, six days a week, rest yeah. on Sunday um, and run every day as well. So run it. Like, yeah, geez, yeah, it's a lot um, of training. Yeah. Um, but like outside of that, like at the moment I'm just doing like a little bit of maintenance. So I'll do like three trainings with my coach yeah. and then like, I'll just like hit the bag on the other two days mm. and then rest Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Right. Cause yeah, it's full on boxing yeah. full on with the training. Yeah. You gotta keep up your cardio and mm. yeah. It's stuff. different. Yeah. And now you've had two pro fights so far yeah. and one KO. Um, what made you want to take that jump from amateurs to pro? I guess like growing up, I always, you know, watch like Muhammad Ali and mm. like Roy Jones, like all those great professional boxers yeah like amateur boxing was something that I, I loved you know it's like so much fun going out there and like fighting like you get lots of fights and stuff but um it was definitely like always my goal to go pro mm. like there's just more notoriety I guess behind yeah because I think um there's some boxers that like stay in the amateurs for a while and take the like commonwealth games sort of mm. they do that sort of stuff um did you ever think of going down that sort of path or you just always wanted to go pro I definitely considered it, but yeah. I feel like I just wanted to get into the pro game as yeah. like, soon as possible and get as much experience as I could. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. I probably would have done the same if I was yeah. in your position, to be yeah. honest, because I see so many fighters like go through this, like um, they say in the amateurs for so long and mm. in my thought process, I'm like, just go pro. Like, yeah, because yeah. like, at the end of the day, like I want to get paid as well. Mm. So of course. Might as well. Yeah, yeah, you want to do it as a full-time thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, and you also transitioned, you mentioned before you transitioned from like Muay Thai to just boxing. Yeah. Um, what was the thought process behind that? Was that always the plan to go just to boxing? Um, Muay Thai is like still something that I'd like definitely like have a lot of love for. I, mm. I like, I love it, but, um, as a career it's just definitely like, it's just not sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, Cause like, exactly. unless you go like UFC or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like boxing is more career, but, um, yeah. And so now that you've had two fights, what's next in your career? Like, what's your goal? Um, do you want to stay in your weight class or maybe go up? Um, next year, I definitely want to um, climb up the ranks like as mm. much as I can. Yeah. Like, I've had like I've sort of like dipped my feet in this year into the pro game, but I definitely want to like make a big spa- make a big splash next year. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like probably like hope to get like work towards an Aussie title in mm. the, in the middleweight division. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, now this is something that I'm sort of interested in. I want to get your thoughts on this. What's mm. your opinion on the whole YouTube boxing sort of scene? 
I don't mind it. I think it brings more eyes yeah, to the sport. Yeah. I like I, I like it at the end of the day. Yeah, like, like I think it's good as well. Mm. It does like I mean, it does bring eyes to boxing, but it's also like I think people get mad at it because there's celebrity boxers who are getting paid more than actual boxers mm. who've been training their whole life. So I can see that sort of point of view, but But yeah. it's all about like the eyes you bring to the sport really. Mm. Like it's not like about how good you are at the end of the day. Yeah. Like you need to be able to market yourself. Yeah, it's like a business. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah. You need to like yeah. Like manage your your image as well as your mm. fighting career. Yeah, that's that's what makes boxing so hard because mm. like you really got to push that business side of it. Um, and I know you mentioned like before, like your training program. Like, what is your does your training program like change when you're leading up to a fight? Like, what does your diet sort of look like in that period? Um, that's been something that I've had to really work on. Obviously, like I enjoy like junk food as anyone does. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. Um, but like, so I'll have to cut like anywhere from like, like eight to like six to eight kilos mm. going into a fight. Jeez, yeah. And like, I had a couple of like pretty bad weight cuts. Like one where mm. I had to cut like roughly six going into a more half hour on the day. That's hard. Yeah. yeah. So like I had to spend a long time in the mm. sauna, but I, I've definitely learned from it. Yeah. Um, and I'm improving. Um, I'm, I'm going to get like a nutrition and stuff. Like that's just something that like, I'm going to dial in mm. the higher up I go. But, um... Yeah, it's definitely like very, very like it takes a lot of discipline to yeah, you know, not drink, not like have certain foods and whatnot. Yeah, that would be very hard, especially like when you're going out with like mates and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. you got to tell them, nah, I got to yeah, you know, yeah. focus on my my yeah. stuff. But um, yeah. Now on the day of a fight, when you do fight, like what do you sort of do? Um, like thirty minutes before an hour before, do you listen to music? Um, like what's sort of your routine? I guess before a fight, I try to get like as relaxed as possible. Mm. Um, just like calm my mind. It, Cause there's not like much you can do like up yeah. until then. There's no point getting worried. You just have to, have to really take it as it comes. And like, I just focus on like being the best version of myself. Yeah. Like, and I feel like I just like in my head, I know that like, I feel I, in, in my head, I feel like I can take anything that they can give me. Yeah. And, like at the end of the day, you know, can they take what I give them? Mm. That's, That's what it comes down to. Yeah, and I actually wasn't able to find this. Have you actually ever lost a fight before? I've lost one Muay Thai fight. Yeah, and how did you sort of deal with that loss? Um, it hit me pretty hard, but I was getting a bit too cocky. And, um, mm, yeah. Because like, I, I hadn't lost in anything. And like I started to like go out the week before a fight and drink and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. And that's yeah. when I had the very, very tough weight cut as well. Yeah. Um, but I lost to like a, a good fighter and like fair play to him. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, like it was definitely like a really, really good learning curve. And that's when I knew I wanted to take this seriously. I didn't want to feel that feeling again. Yeah, I think that goes on to like, I, I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. And I think you probably would have learned something from that for sure. Because when you're winning, like constantly you get complacent sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And then sometimes a loss can like put you back in check mm-hmm. sort of thing. Um, and going on to injury side of things have you had any like bad injuries that have set you back a bit um i had a blood clot oh. um which happened like in my heart like at the Jeez. it was just after on my state title and then covid happened so i had like a like a like eight month hiatus yeah. from boxing yeah so like that was within like i've only been boxing for about like just over three years so i've had like covid i've dealt oh, with yeah. like that i've had like shoulder injuries as well Jeez, yeah but um it's just something that like it comes with it. Like I've been pretty lucky, like nothing too major. Mm. But yeah, the blood clot was anything where I had to take time off. Yeah, right. And uh, I know um, before you mentioned like that how you actually got into boxing. You've like looked up to Muhammad Ali. Mm. Um, I think Sugar Ray Leonard. You mentioned yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, who are like some other boxers, like modern day boxers that you look up to or model yourself after? Or is uh, it more the like there's so many like Javante Davis, Terence mm. Crawford. Like yeah. there's so many great boxers. I feel like. I try to look at every boxer and take like something from like, like because like they're all there for a reason. They're all yeah. like good at different things. And I feel like I want to be like a, like a sponge and taking like as much as I can from each one. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Javante Davis. I think him and Ryan Garcia, their fight just got mm. confirmed. What do you think um, is going to happen there? there will be a good fight. There'll yeah. be a lot of eyes on that fight. I feel like that's what boxing needs. Just like mm. more fighters fighting each other. Yeah. Um, I feel like Javante Davis will win. Yeah. But, I, like, I feel like like people undercut like Ryan Garcia's heart. Yeah. I feel like he, he's got more heart than like people give him credit for. Yeah, I mean, I 
I hate to admit it, I think Javante Davis will win. Mm. I'm more of a Ryan Garcia fan yeah, myself, yeah. but it'll be a very good fight. Yeah, so, well, um, for sure. Yeah. Um, and what's a piece of advice you would give young athletes trying to get in maybe your position in boxing? Just dive into it. Like, mm. you just have to, like, take everything as it comes. Obviously, there's always going to be adversity. Try to, like, learn from as much as you can. Like, yeah. learn from the wins, learn from the losses. Yeah. Um... You really just have to like stay committed and disciplined, really. Yeah, and s- something that I am curious about as well with you, um, you started when you were 18, so did mm. you start while you were still at school or after? Just after school. Yeah, are some of your friends from school like surprised where you are now? Like, did yeah. They, did they ever see you going down this path? Nah, like there's been some like pretty funny reactions and stuff, but um, obviously like pe- some people saw on Instagram and whatnot, but mm. um, yeah, there were like a few people when they found out I was a pro boxer were pretty pretty stunned yeah jeez but it just shows you that like, I guess like anyone can do it really like, yeah because no like mold. that's the thing with boxing because even some of my friends they, they've like recently they've shown interest in it and mm. they want to get into it and they've asked me like some questions because I used to do it mm. um, and I just tell them just go for it because like when I went into the boxing gym the first time, I see all these guys and like, they're the nicest guys. But yeah. like when you're in the ring like that, they'll give you a run for your money. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've dealt with that. Like you see a guy, like you wouldn't pick them to be a boxer, mm. like out in public. But then when you fight them, you're like, jeez. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, and a question we ask everyone uh, at the very end is you, if you could be any athlete in the world, past or present, who would it be? If I could be or me? Be, be, yeah, be an athlete. Who would it be, and why? Doesn't have to be boxing. Could honestly be any sport. Mm. A lot of people say the NBA players, the NFL, the big money sports, sort of. Um, but yeah, I reckon I probably choose Roger Federer. Really? Yeah, okay. I feel like yeah. he's got a good lifestyle, the European yeah. lifestyle, and like he obviously earns a lot of money as well. Yeah, which right. is good. And he's like a just a good good bloke. I feel mm. like. Yeah, that's a bit of a different one. Yeah, because yeah. everyone said NBA players. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like NBA is like a little bit more stressful. Like the mm. seasons are much longer and stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of games in NBA season. Mm. So um, yeah, I think we've covered everything there. Um, thank you so much for coming on as well. Um, honestly, I think uh, just before we go. Champions Gym I actually was going to join mm. recently um, I might come down now might, might, yeah come, come down for a free session yeah I might, might come down to one of your classes yeah. you know we'll see what happens but I wish you the best for your, the rest of your Thank career you man um, I'll be watching um, yeah if you guys like this one it'll be on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well go and follow the Instagram the TikTok go and follow Jude um, he's up and coming so uh, yeah I'll catch you guys in the next episode thank you but behind closed doors I'm a fool for your life